Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Hobo Winfrey. Earlier in the week, I had the great pleasure of catching up with Ryan Malloy. Now, Ryan has written a piece for the Irish Chamber Orchestra, which is to celebrate our 50th birthday, and this will be performed at our concert on Friday. Right, so Ryan, um, obviously I've done a little bit of homework this morning, and I've looked online um, and I found a very interesting video of you. Now, what I thought was really fascinating is that there's this incredible mixture of um, things that you talk about that inform your music. So drone, colour, transcendence, um, painting, characters, plans, stories, ideas. There's so many different things that you pull together. And what I wanted to ask was, what things did you really draw on for your Irish Chamber Orchestra piece? Good question. As you can see, I've kind of covered most of my bases there with every possible influence. <laughs> so, <laughs> I kind of, something for everyone. Um, so, exactly. So uh, yeah, in the Irish Chamber Orchestra piece, um, Lewisk, um, that's premiering, premiering this week. Um, I, I was influenced basically by two main ideas that I had that all came from the sound of the ensemble, the sound of the, the, the string sound of the Irish Chamber Orchestra and kind of what I know they have done in the past. So, and, I, and I have a very kind of a very straight, stringy, kind of minimalistic kind of sound that I wanted to use. And I had this one idea that I generated and I kind of put it to the side um, to let it ferment for a while. And I then come up with this other idea that was just a big blast of a reel. And because I sometimes oscillate widely between these two musical psyches, I suppose. And um, I played about with the reel for a little bit and, you, you know, developed it. And then put it to the side and come back to my other idea and didn't really know what to do. And I turned around between both ideas and eventually the penny dropped and I realised that they were both just two sides of the same coin, which was the piece that I wanted to write. So I ended up just putting mm -hmm. them both together and Lewis, the title of the piece means oscillation or swing. So uh, it, it essentially does what it says on the tin. It, it oscillates between these two ideas in a kind of a very dance like celebratory fashion. And I suppose that's that was part of the remit of the piece that it was a birthday present for for the ICO. Um, what's it like? when as a composer when you've written a piece and then the very first moment that you hear it or that you hear the first the first sounds of it live oh that's it's it's impossible to describe but it really is it's the bug it's the drug that just makes you keep doing what you do um that's assuming that the performance is a good one of course <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. yeah more often than not it's um it's a kind of it's just like the final neurons have been connected in your brain because you spend so much time working out what the piece is going to sound like. How am I going to write this? Are the performers going to read this the way I think they are going to read it? And then when you hear all that back, it's just that final step, that final piece in the jigsaw. And it's just it's exhilarating. Absolutely exhilarating. There's nothing uh, there's nothing quite like it. And I love to when I'm teaching in, in Maynooth, and when I see students here and their pieces perform for the first time, that same, oh, it's just that same emotion comes back to me all the time. And it, it, it's what makes us do what we do. So that's such a lovely way to describe it, because I think certainly as a, as a musician, when you play something for the first time, you're just really keen to recreate or create what the, the composer wants. But at the same time, there's this element of interpretation. And so, when you've written something, how do you allow for that interpretation, but at the same time get what you actually want? So that that's a really, really good question and perhaps a tough one to, to answer. I suppose uh, with all notated work, there is this element of, I suppose, wiggle room where the performer can can get in and I, when you're writing, when, uh, when you commit something to paper, I suppose you're aware, you're inherently aware of what that wiggle room possibly is, mm -hmm. or you know where the performer can can get in. I suppose that I left out in in that previous 
description of what it's like to hear your music for the first time uh, is that connection that you have with a performer because of, because of course performers can do things differently um, and they will bring something different out um, and even between different performances and so there's a, con a connection mm -hmm. that you that you get with all the musicians that's really important as a composer because obviously sitting at your desk you don't necessarily get that and so sometimes that connection is is their interpretation what they bring to the table what they manage to pull out of mm -hmm. the score that mm -hmm. you may subconsciously or otherwise have put into the notation and they've managed to pull it out without either maybe you realizing it or them them making the music out of them making musical sense and you know powerful communication out of essentially your scribbles and so with 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 what you know about the ico and the piece that you've written what are you really hoping that the orchestra the strings of the orchestra will bring to your piece oh i i, I just a good blast of vib vibrance <laughs> and uh, like a singing melody. Um, like the ICO have to, I do such a range of uh, repertoire um, and I was fully aware of that whenever I kind of included the real um, portion in this because I've heard them, you know, work with the likes of Michal of Solowang, God rest him, um, greatly missed in that whole scene and um, Bill Whelan and the likes. Uh, and they can really, they really get the whole Irish traditional vibe. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I've put it in there in trusting that they will be able to pull that, pull that out again. And also then kind of mm -hmm. switch very quickly between that and what I am calling a kind of a very straight, um, rhythmically kind of rigid, minimalist kind of, kind of figuration. It's hard to describe without actually hearing the piece. And, yes. I, and, and only yes. I have the privilege of that at the minute. <laughs> 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 well uh, Ryan thank you so much for sharing some of your insights and thoughts with us today um, and I'm really sad that I won't be there uh, next week to hear that moment when the strings bring your piece to life. Thanks very much Matthew and next time I'll definitely have to stick in a, a, an Ob Oprah, Ob Oprah Winfrey obligado door. <laughs> 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 that, that, I think that would be very much appreciated by everyone. Thanks ever so Great, much. Great, thanks a million, Matthew. Thank you. Bye-bye.